I represent Yakima, we have a large gang problem. And when we don't acknowledge the fact that the zones around schools, which will create an enhancement, aren't taken care of, then what we see, there's many stories of constituents who, where we'll see the gang members try to recruit right outside that zone, and, pos and they'll say, if, would you like a new bike to an eight-year-old? We've actually had that, and they'll say, well, yes, I would. They'll give them drugs to deliver to another person right outside that zone. We feel like that the zone should be even larger because it's such a, a big problem within my district, and we feel like that should also be considered, and we should have the ability to stack to make sure that that doesn't continue to happen, especially with the fentanyl crisis we face today. I ask for a no vote. In my community, I'm seeing spikes in property crime and violent crime. I've told this story on the House floor before about an individual who was released from jail, didn't end up reporting in to their probation officer, stopped in front of my house, Can't hear. and ended up firing three shots, one hitting my neighbor's house. This is an individual who was a criminal who was released and didn't report to probation. We should not be sending this message to the people of the state of Washington. I urge a no vote on this bill. In our public policy in recent years, we have moved away from that reasonable expectation that all Washingtonians have in all corners of the state toward something else, toward a system that worries about the mechanics of incarceration and punishment more than the greater good to a civil society of incarceration and criminal punishment. Madam Speaker, we are seeing the bad fruit of this rotten tree. We are seeing violent crime rates increasing. We are seeing property crime rates increasing. And Madam Speaker, our constituents, yours and mine, and all the people of the state, they know this in their bones. It seems like there's not a day that goes by that there's not a stabbing or, uh, or, or gunshots that are being fired or people that are driving down our highways going, uh, you know, way over the speed limit. And speed is not a reason for that person to be pursued. People are getting killed. Cars are being wrecked, and you know, in my district, I have people that are living on fixed incomes, or they're single parents. They can't afford just to go out and replace these things. We're sending a clear message across all of Washington that you can break our law and face minimal consequences. That may not be the intent of the legislation, but that's the practical application of what we're doing now. I think it's time that we step up as a legislature and vote this bill down because we need to show the people of the state of Washington that we care about public safety and that we care about holding those who commit crimes in our communities accountable. This is contributing to the lawlessness in our state that we need to stop. We need to turn the tide. This does not help. We need to put this bill down and work on meaningful reforms that enhance the safety of not just my family, but yours and the safety of the rest of the, the people of Washington. Vote no. Four kids in one week OD'd on fentanyl in my local schools. If they caught them distributing that drug in that protected zone, I want additions and enhancements. Madam Speaker, our kids are dropping like flies. I had a, a call from a desperate mother Representative Griffey, what can I do? My daughter got into fentanyl addiction because she found it at school. We have got to tackle these issues with a haste that I don't think we're doing, Madam Speaker. This is one thing that prosecutors would have the option of adding enhancements, because here's the deal. If they're incarcerated for longer terms, they can't do it anymore. And that's the deal. We can give them longer sentences, we can isolate them from society, and if we isolate them from society, they then can't do it anymore. We come here every day and we talk about 
hurt people hurt people, Madam Speaker. That these criminals are hurting. There's no argument there. But at some point, Madam Speaker, at some point, when you hurt the most vulnerable in our society, our babies, the disabled adults, and the elderly that have given their lives for our community, and we say you can victimize those, and there will be no extra repercussions. Well, at that point, Madam Speaker, we have put the criminals above the victims. And that is the importance of the enhancements. The importance of the enhancements say, those victims did not have a chance against those criminals. And at some point we have to say, hurt people hurt people, but we have determined as a society, you can no longer victimize those who cannot protect themselves. You know, I, I have concerns about gangs. I have concerns about gang initiation. They go after our most vulnerable kids. And when you are asked to be in a gang, you're usually asked to have an initiation test or a ritual to get into that gang. What if that ritual is to my 16-year-old son to sell a drug that was given to him by an adult to another kid at the school bus stop or outside of the school? What if that was given to my son to do? Do you know what happens to my son? He gets a minor conviction, and that gang member might have used that as initiation for my son to get into a gang, and then he gets his sins enhancement. I, I just can't even explain how frustrating this is. These are our children. And if someone is trying to take advantage of our children, where we send them to be most protected, why would we do this?